make an effort to remember, or failing that, invent. This is French feminist Monique Wittig's object lesson about the paradoxical space of emergence, where memory and the architecture of the new collide in the abyss of freedom and the force of language. It seems impossible to speak about what happened on that day, in that place. Language will of necessity fail here today. And yet, I must remember, and I must speak to you. I must answer the call to speak about the unspeakable. What do you remember? Where were you on December the 6th, 1989? I was not at the École Polytechnique in Montreal on the day when Marc Lapine killed 14 female students in the name of feminism. And yet, I am without alibi. I'm without alibi for the very public work of grieving that this horrific act of mass murder committed in the name of feminism and of women calls forth in me today as it did on December the 6th, 1989. And as it must call forth in me every day that I live and work within the constraints of a life forged in relation to feminisms, the work of gender, and the multiple projects of democratization and of freedom from gender-based violence. You're women, he said. You're going to be engineers. You're all a bunch of feminists. I hate feminists. Is that what you remember? What I remember most vividly is the seemingly incomprehensible gap between the clarity of Mark Lapine's dehumanizing accusation and systemic separation of the students by gender into those who lived and those who were killed, where being identified as women was for Lapine avowedly a good enough reason for murder and the public insistence dispersed across many days and weeks of media coverage and everyday conversations after the event that a motive for Lapine's actions was simultaneously elusive and certainly not about gender. Fourteen women were hunted down, marked by a serial logic of gender and of absolute substitutability and murdered on that bleak day. This is gender-based violence. And in Canada, as elsewhere, gender-based violence is both commonplace and exists in multiple guises, many of which go unmet by either memory or grief, but are simply assimilated and normalized in the name of the banal, the familiar, the known. And it is likewise critical to remember that we cannot simply speak of the dead as 14 women. The names matter. They remind us of irreducible difference and of singularity. Geneviève, Marise, Hélène, Annie, Nathalie, Barbara, Anne-Marie, Maud, Barbara, Maria, Marise, Anne-Marie, Sonia, Michelle, Annie. There can be no comfort here in a serial logic of the knowable or of an us and a them. And there can be no we that presumes in women a repetition of the known or in feminism a single political idiom that we cannot know the precise facts of an absolute narrative that might grant us a transparent account of the actions of Mark Lapine is not an adequate ground, either for disavowal or a refusal to take up a stance of answerability and of public witness for murders committed in the name of a hatred of feminism and feminists on that day specifically and for acts of gender-based violence committed in every nation, in every neighborhood, on every campus, every day. And here today, in the university, we must face the unknowable and look in the face of the strangers amongst us and forge a relationality of answerability. The university must, 
as Derrida put it so eloquently, be without condition. We must take back the future and insist that there is no post to feminist, even as we insist that feminisms will never be right or good or immune from all the vulnerabilities of any public discourse. We must, as Linda Zerilli argues, be beginners as feminists and dare to begin again and to dream of a way of life that breaks with the grammar of the same indifference. And so both things must be true. We must remember because we must not forget. We must meet together and we must not know in advance who belongs here, now. And as we remember, we must remind ourselves that if there is a thing called freedom, then that freedom will emerge not through the rememoration of the past, holding on to a story about that past event as framing in some absolute sense what or who can appear today and what is today in the realm of the possible. But we must trust that in our remembering, we will also always invent. We will begin anew, and without alibi, we will risk not knowing what is and what might be. And so we end where we began, with Monique Wittig's haunting invocation. You walked alone, full of laughter. You bathed bare-bellied. You say you have lost all recollection of it. Remember. You say there are no words to describe this time. You say it does not exist. But remember, make an effort to remember, or failing that, invent. <laughs>